Well, I've moved to a different part of Worcester now just because of the rain and because it's slightly busier here. Um, my Lord, have mercy on me. Fill me with your spirit. Use me for your glory. Help me to preach your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good afternoon. I'm here to preach the gospel, to speak about the Lord Jesus Christ, to speak about the Saviour of the world, the one who came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. That's every one of us. I'm here to preach about the Lord Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary and was laid in the grave and was resurrected by the power of Almighty God. I'm here to speak about the one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, your sins are forgiven. You have peace with God and a certain, a sure and certain hope of heaven, of salvation, of everlasting life. Jesus' resurrection guarantees that. But if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins remain upon you and you must stand before God on the day of judgment in your sins and you cannot stand in your sins Jesus himself is God and he will be the one on the throne of heaven on the day of judgment and he will say to you depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels you see the warnings couldn't be clearer the Lord Jesus warned us, his warnings could not be clearer that there is a judgment to come, there is a wrath to come. There is a day coming when all of us, every one of us, everyone who has ever lived, must stand before the judgment throne of Almighty God. And if we don't know Jesus Christ, then we don't know the salvation of God. And if we don't know that salvation, we are lost and damned and ruined to hellfire and torment. Hell is a place of terrible, fiery torment, inescapable. Once we're in hell, we're in hell for eternity. There are no second chances. There's no further opportunity for salvation. Once we have been judged and the, our names have not been found written in the book of life, we're told we will be cast into the lake of fire. There is a judgment to come. There is a wrath to come. There is an eternal damnation and torment in hellfire to come. And oh my dear friends, if you do not know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, then you will die and perish in your sins. What days we are living in, what terrible days, what perplexing times, what terrifying times. You can read in the Bible at the prophecies, for example, in the book of Revelation, you can see what terrible things are coming on the earth. I think we're just seeing the beginning of these things. Wars and rumours of wars, rumours of famines coming and things like that. Great political upheavals, the, the rise of Antichrist. But you see, with all of these things that are coming, if we are living as if we could just live any way we chose and live for as long as we chose, and we think we'll die at a good old age, maybe 70 or 80 years of age. We are deceiving ourselves. Our breath is in God's hand. He will call us away whenever he chooses to judgment. Now if I turn to Revelation chapter 9 in the book of Revelation, that is, in the last book in the Bible, I read about a war coming in which an army of 200 million men will march. And as a result of that war, a third of the world's population will die. You see, we're talking today about atrocities, hospitals bombed, and things like that, but that's nothing compared to what's coming. Compared to the slaughter that is predicted, prophesied, I must say, it will happen because no word of God can fail. The prophecy of that war that is to come. And you see, before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, and he will return on the clouds of heaven, all of these things must come to pass. Our lives are not in our own hands, they're in God's hands. Our breath is in God's hands. And we are sinners, and God is angry with us for our sin. And we are on the very verge of hellfire and damnation. And our feet are set in slippery places. That is why we need Jesus Christ. 
That is why we need Jesus Christ. He alone can take away our sin. He alone can reconcile us to Almighty God. He alone can cleanse us in His precious blood from all our iniquities. You see, it's not just that we've done wrong. We've all done wrong. We've all broken the commandments of God. Lying is sin. Swearing is sin. Idolatry is sin. Godlessness, unbelief, sin. And God looks at the heart. God knows who you are. I don't know anybody here today, but God knows everybody here today. And not only that, He knows everything about you. God knows your very thoughts. When you're alone in your own homes, God knows your thoughts. He sees the hidden things of shame. God is that judge and each one of us must be judged according to our deeds, to our works. One lie would see us cast into hell for eternity. Every sin, the Bible tells us, will receive its just recompense and reward. And the wages of sin is death and there is a second death. There is a wrath to come and a hell to come. Listen to these words from Revelation chapter 20. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you see, the lake of fire will be your end. Hell, fire and damnation. Torment in hell, fire for eternity if you will not repent and turn from your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might find the salvation that comes from Almighty God. Each and every one of us has a soul. Death isn't the end. When we die, our body may rot, but our souls go before God. Jesus told of a rich man who went straight to the fires of hell and he lifted up his eyes in torment. There was no relief for him there. There were no second chances for him there. He's still there today. He will be there forever and that is where you will be if you do not repent. Repent of your sin. Turn from your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek him with all your heart. You see, Jesus tells us in his word, we will seek him and we'll find him when we seek him with all our heart. We are indifferent, we are blasé, we are unconcerned about our soul. We, can't, we fret about the weather, we're concerned about the shopping, we're terrified of the new government. But we have no time for our souls. The most important thing of all, that we should find peace with God, that we should know forgiveness of our sins. We have no time for that. Pride was the sin of the devil, and we are proud enough to think that, we he say, if there's a God, then he should save us. But you see, God has sent and given us his Son, Jesus Christ, and those who find Jesus Christ know the salvation that comes from Almighty God. That, that is good news. That is the greatest of news. Thank you, yes. That is the very greatest of news to know that the Lord Jesus Christ died to take away my sin. I hope you know that. I really hope you're trusting Jesus alone for the forgiveness of your sins. That is wonderful. Jesus Christ died to save sinners. Now, I am a sinner. We are all sinners. But there was a day when I wasn't a Christian, and there was a day when I became a Christian. If I had died on the day when I wasn't a Christian, I would have gone to hell. But the day I became a Christian, the Lord Jesus forgave me and took away my sin and gave me everlasting life. And I have, amen, <laughs> amen, I have everlasting life because Jesus died for me, he loved me, he gave himself for me. 
He died in my place. And because of the Lord Jesus Christ I live. Because I must tell others this as well. I must tell you that there is a Saviour. I must tell you that there is a God who made the heavens and the earth. I must tell you that evolution is a lie. You who believe in the Big Bang, it's been scientifically proven to be nonsense in the last year. Have you heard that? Did you know that? Did you know that the physicists and the um, astrophysicists and the astronomers are running around in a panic saying, oh, we got it all wrong. But of course, they're not turning back to God. They're looking for another theory like, oh, we all live in a black hole or something like that. But you see, God made the heavens and the earth. He did it, Amen. By His power, by His power, God made the heavens and the earth and He made us for His own glory. The God of heaven and earth and sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for sinners, to love sinners like you and me, to die in our place. The Lord Jesus was lovely. He was pure. He was holy. He was righteous. The Lord Jesus never sinned. We are full of sin. We are sinful. We are constantly breaking the commandments of God. But the Lord Jesus never sinned. And that's how he can be a fitting sacrifice for sinners like you and me. That's how the Lord Jesus can die in our place. If somebody was to... You know him, I hope. Thank you very much for stopping and listening. And the Lord bless you and be with you and encourage you. He does, he does, he does. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. So Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. And he will save you. And he will give you life if you trust in him. A dead saviour can't help us. Buddha can't help us. Muhammad cannot help us. Jesus is not a dead saviour. The Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. And he is alive today and he is the saviour of all those who put their trust in him. And the Lord Jesus will have mercy upon you and he will deliver you from your sin and he will save you. As I said, there was a day when I wasn't a Christian. I was lost, I was damned, I was under the wrath of God. If I had died, I would have gone straight to hell. But because the Lord Jesus died for me and I believed on him, my sins were forgiven. They were washed away by his blood. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, then your sins remain upon you. He is the saviour of the world. He is the deliverer of sinners. He is the one that takes away sin. When Jesus went down into the river Jordan to be baptised by John the Baptist, John the Baptist, seeing Jesus for the first time, said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You see, it takes a sacrificial lamb, but this sacrificial lamb is very special. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. He was the pure and sinless and holy one, without spot, without blemish. He was altogether pure and holy and lovely, the exact opposite of what you and I are. We might, our friends might think we're good. Others might think we're important, but God looks at the heart. He is no respecter of persons. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. And you see, the Lord Jesus was everything that we are not. He was pure. He was holy. He was righteous. He was altogether lovely. And he died for sinners like you and me. And he was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. Homosexuality is sinful. Sexual immorality of all kinds is sinful. The Bible says, marriage is honourable among all and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Now what that is telling us is this, that the only legitimate place for the expression of sexual desire is within lawful marriage. Now marriage, according to Almighty God, is a union between a man and a woman not between two people of the same sex. If we create marriage and say it's between two people of the same sex, we mock God and we mock the Bible 
that foul language. We'll see you in hell, my friend. Repent of your foul language. Well, you will. You will unless you repent and turn and believe on the Lord Jesus. So you see, marriage, marriage is between a man and a woman. Furthermore, the Bible tells us that God made them male and female in his image. And no man has ever, ever become a woman. And no woman has ever, ever become a man. That is impossible. Somebody needs to tell that to the new government because they have no idea. They have no idea what a woman is. And they've been elected with a, with a hundreds and hundreds majority into government. I tremble for the nation. If they don't know what a woman is, then they have a problem. They don't know what humanity is. And yet there they are, running the country. God made us male and female in his image. You see, you can't change what God has done. No doctor can change that. No scientist can change that. The only people who seem to be able to change a person's sex seem to be lawyers. And that doesn't surprise me. But it is a legal fiction, a fantasy, to believe that a person can change sex. Now marriage is to be between a man and a woman. Marriage is honourable among all, and a bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Sexual immorality, pornography, God sees it, is the worship of the creature more than the creator. And we live in a day full of pornography. It's said that we have the generation that's being brought up now, Z is it, is the first generation to grow up with freely accessible, widely available pornography. And to add that, you must add the sexual education in schools, which is perverted to say the least. Wickedness of every kind. Well, God says, fornicators and adulterers, he will judge. We live in a sexually promiscuous, sexually impure, sexually compromised, sexually perverse generation. We live in a generation saturated with pornography and adultery and fornication and sodomy and other kinds of sexual sin and God sees all of this and his wrath is kindled on account of such things. Those things are against nature. Woe to the Church of England for choosing. Woe to the Church of England for choosing to bless sodomy in her churches. She is under the judgment of God for her sins. You take something that God condemns and you make a good thing out of it and you say, we'll bless that, then you become God's enemy. God is on the very throne of heaven. God reigns over the heavens and the earth. And those who are indifferent to the things of God and those who have no concern for their own souls and those who would pass on and perish and are very happy about it, like those two young men who passed earlier and swore at me, you see, God is on the throne of heaven. You cannot resist God. You cannot escape his wrath unless you escape by the way that he has appointed. And he says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. That means finding the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the man that God has appointed to take away sin. He is the one that God sent to be the saviour of the world. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have everlasting life. If you believe on him, if you turn from your sins, you must repent of your sins. You must turn from your sins. You must find Jesus Christ or you will perish in your sins. You will die in your sins. Maybe in that war that I've already spoken of when 200 million men march from the east and a third of the world's population, that's more than 2 billion people, perish in the way. Now what would happen, my friends, today, what would happen today if God's judgment were to fall on Worcester today? Oh, you say that's not going to happen. Well, why shouldn't it happen? Why shouldn't it fall on a generation that is full of sexual perversity? Why shouldn't it fall on a generation that is full of drunkenness and cocaine snorting and lies? 
Lies are terrible. God hates lying lips. Why shouldn't it fall on a generation that mocks this gospel, that hates the Lord Jesus Christ, that tramples the knowledge of his death and resurrection underfoot, that passes on and perishes? Why shouldn't it fall upon this nation that is stuffed full of pride? Because the Bible says that pride was the sin of the devil. Pride comes before a fall. So you see. And we are all proud, every one of us. Pride was the sin of the devil. We are all proud. We all think we're good enough for God. We all think that we're not as bad as others, not as bad as those people down the street or those people across the road. We all think that we deserve salvation, but the truth is that none of us, not one of us, deserve that salvation that comes from Almighty God. God did not send his Son into the world for good people, because there were no good people. He didn't send his Son into the world because we deserve salvation. We do not deserve mercy. He didn't send Jesus Christ into the world because we were ready. We are never ready. Our sins separate us from God. The Bible says it was whilst we were yet sinners. In due course, Christ died for the ungodly. In other words, God the Father sent God the Son into the world to save his enemies, to save sinners, to save the wicked, the vile, the corrupt, the powerless, the helpless, the wretched, the vile, sinners such as you and I, sinners who have broken the commandments of God, sinners who are naturally the enemies of God and are can by no means save ourselves. So you see, if you hear this gospel that Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world and you pass on and you perish, you'll die in your sins. And there is a wrath to come. And there is a judgment to come. And there is a day in the which God has appointed. A day in which he has appointed judgment. He has appointed the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, has appointed God the Son as the judge of all things. And the Lord Jesus Christ will be your judge to everlasting torment in hell fire. And you can't say you weren't warned because I've warned you. I've told you, you have a soul. I've told you there is a wrath to come. I've told you there is a remedy for sin. And you pass on and you perish and you have no time for your souls. We live in a mocking, godless, idolatrous generation. And the judgments of God are abroad in the land. I think we'll see that this new government will prove to be a judgment from God upon us. It certainly doesn't seem to have any Christian morals. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, is the creator of all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God did it by his power. God did it for his glory. God did it. And the Lord Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that which was lost. So what about you, my friend? You have a soul. You will die. And after death comes judgment. No reincarnation. No annihilation. After death comes judgment. We must all stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. You must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ in your sins. One lie. God hates lying lips. God cannot lie. Nothing that is impure or unclean will ever enter into that holy place. It cannot. God will not let you into his heaven. But you will be cast into hell along with the devil and his angels to be tormented in fire forever and ever. I must warn you. I must warn you that hell is a real place. I must warn you that you are on the very verge of hell and that your feet are in slippery places. I must warn you that you need a saviour and that Jesus Christ is that saviour. I must warn you. I must warn you that you cannot be saved by any other name or by any other person. Jesus Christ alone is the saviour whom God sent. This is Christianity. This is true Christianity. And God sent his Son into the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die in the place of sinners. Turn from your sin. 
Turn from your evil ways. Turn from your wickedness. Turn from your lies. Turn from those things which are unprofitable to your soul. Repent of your idolatries. Repent of your dabbling in the occult, your horoscopes and so on, your charms, your lucky rabbit's foot, or whatever it is that you're doing that God hates, turn from it and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and God will have mercy on you. Turn from your sins and God will have mercy on you. Now, I'm reading from Revelation chapter 22. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He will give every one of us according to our work. If you're a liar, you'll have your place in the lake of fire. If you're an idolater, you'll have your place in the lake of fire. See, Islam never saved a single person from their sin. Islam cannot save sinners. Islam has no sacrifice for sin. Islam denies the deity, the Godhood of Jesus Christ. Whoever denies the Godhood of Jesus Christ they have the spirit of Antichrist. Islam never saved a soul. But there are so many who go to church and they're not saved. And they don't know Jesus Christ. There are so many pulpits that don't know Jesus Christ and don't preach the Bible as the Word of God. But this book in my hands, the Bible, and only the Bible consisting of the Old and New Testaments, is the Word of God. Not the Quran, not the Apocrypha, not any other writings. Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. And he said, whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. If Jesus Christ sets you free from your sin and from the judgment to come and from the wrath of God, you will be free indeed. But if you don't find Jesus, you are now, today, right now, at this moment, under the wrath of God. Repent of your sin. Turn from your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what wicked days we live in. What evil days. Days of abortion, the murder of the unborn child, the slaughter of the innocent. I believe in a woman's right to live. Not to be slaughtered in the womb when they're at their most vulnerable. Every single one of those children killed, and their children, not just, not just blobs of cells, as uh, children in the schools are taught. They are human beings made in the image of God. Every single one of those is precious in the eyes of God. Every single one of those from the time of conception is a human being with a soul made in the image of God for his glory. So woe to those who kill the unborn child. God's wrath is kindled on account of such things. And he will judge you for your sin. And here we are in a generation where the very mothers of our children have destroyed the fruit of their own wombs. And you say, oh, don't say that, you're making people feel guilty. Well, we should feel guilty about that. Woe unto us because of the shedding of innocent blood in that hospital in Worcester up the road there. The shedding of innocent blood. The taking of innocent lives. The slaughter of the innocents. The murder of the unborn child, abortion. And you see that God sees it. And the blood of those children cries to God for vengeance. And God will arise and he will avenge them. I can tell you now that England is under the wrath of God. We are finished as a nation because of the shedding of innocent blood. But what about you, my friend? Repent of your sin and God will have mercy on you. He will deliver you. He will save you from your sins. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord in Isaiah chapter 1. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Oh, my friends, turn from your sins. Turn from your evil ways. Turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might find that salvation which comes from Almighty God. He died for sinners. The Lord Jesus died for sinners. He laid down his life for ordinary common on God sinners like you and I. 
so that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, will you call on his name? Will you turn from your sins? Will you forsake your sins? Will you flee from the wrath to come? Will you cast yourselves on the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you find the mercy and the salvation that comes from the one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God will give you life. God will save you from your sin. God will have mercy on you. God will deliver you. God will give you, resurrect you to everlasting glory and salvation forever and ever and ever. But if you will not have the Lord Jesus Christ to be your saviour, if you turn your back on him, if you reject him, if you deny him, and saying that Jesus is just a man and not God, saying that Jesus is just a prophet and not God, is to deny him and is to reject him because Jesus Christ is both God and man. One of his names in the Old Testament is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And He is the Saviour of all of those that put their trust in Him. Turn from your sins. Turn from your evil ways. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus who will soon be revealed on the clouds of heaven in all of the glory that belongs to God alone. Turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall have life to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So many uh, came past, and so many, just such indifference, Lord, such hardness of heart. Lord, only you can change that. Lord, I plead with you for the people of Worcester. I plead with you for the people of this city, Father, that you wouldn't pass them by or over, that my preaching wouldn't just be judgment to them wouldn't just be the last thing they hear before they're cast into hell, Father. But I pray for an awakening in this city. Lord, you've worked here before. You've been here before. I remember that a man called Hugh Latimer was the bishop here and that he was burned to ashes for his faith. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would have mercy upon this city and its hard-hearted, indifferent, sinful people, Lord, that conviction of sin would fall upon this city, that you would raise up preaching of your word here, raise up men filled with your Holy Spirit to preach your word, that you would turn the tide here, Lord, that you'd awaken sinners here, Lord, that you would have mercy upon the lost. Father, I pray that you would, I pray that you would, a hunger for God would come upon the people of Worcester. Father, have mercy. I feel absolutely weak and pathetic, Lord, and yet I know that the message is the truth, Lord, and yet this is your message, Father. This message is the truth and yet it seems to have no power Lord where is the power that goes with this message if the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation oh Lord attend this message with the power of your Holy Spirit oh Lord have mercy upon those who are perishing Lord let them not slide into hell and Lord have mercy upon them I pray oh Lord turn the tide in this city and awaken souls here I ask and pray in Jesus name amen amen Sometimes the hardness of people's hearts can be disheartening. Well, you can see I'm in the main square here and the cathedral is just over there. Prayed already for the work that people would hear. Busy bus stop. Quiet square. Lots of people passing through though. We'll see how things go. Good afternoon, it's my privilege to be here to preach the Gospel of God, to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Saviour of the world, the Saviour of all those who put their trust in Him. Without Jesus Christ, we are lost and damned and ruined in our sins. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot be saved. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, there only remains a certain fearful expectation of judgment. There is a wrath to come. There is a hell to come. There is a damnation to come. We must all stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ and give an account. And he will either be your saviour forever, for everlasting life from all your sin, or he will be your judge to everlasting damnation and torment in hell fire. Now in the Bible, which is the word of God, the Bible is the word of God. 
In Acts chapter 17, we read the following words. That God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He is God who became flesh and dwells, dwelt among us. And the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary where he was crucified where he was nailed to a wooden cross and raised up between the heavens and the earth and where he died and when he was on that cross God judged him for sin not his own sin the Lord Jesus was all together without sin the Lord Jesus never sinned the Lord Jesus never broke the commandments of God he always pleased his Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, the Saviour of all those who put their trust in him. But you see, we read here, God has given the assurance in that he raised him from the dead. Jesus Christ was resurrected by the power of Almighty God. He is not dead, he is risen. Now, that fact alone is extraordinary. Extraordinary that someone who was dead, who had been dead for three days, was resurrected. You see, when you're dead, there's nothing that's going to bring you back. Don't believe all these near-death experiences on YouTube, for example. They are all the experiences of people who actually didn't die. They were near death, but they didn't die. But Jesus Christ did die, and he was in the grave for three days and three nights, and he was raised from the dead by the power of Almighty God. And he is not dead, he is risen, he is resurrected, he is alive today. And he is that saviour of the world, that saviour who saves everyone who comes to him from their sins, and gives them everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will live too. You will have everlasting life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you seek him with all your heart, if you find him, he is not dead, he is risen. The Lord Jesus Christ is alive today on the throne of heaven today at the right hand of God the Father today reigning in glory today which belongs to God alone. The Lord Jesus Christ the second person of the Holy Trinity God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Saviour of the world, the Saviour of all those that put their trust in him. And if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you will never be put to shame. You have a soul. Now, the Bible says, and I'll read this again, God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you repented of your sins? Have you cried out to God for mercy? Have you acknowledged that you are not worthy of salvation, not worthy of the mercy of God, not worthy of his goodness, not worthy of the salvation that comes from him alone? Because we must repent and we must turn from our sins and we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if we would know the forgiveness of our sins, peace with God and the salvation that comes from God. Sin is any transgression of the commandments of God. God is a judge. He will judge every one of us. God is a righteous judge. He judges according to his Ten Commandments. And we have all broken those commandments, all of us, repeatedly, 
breaking the commandments of God. We are guilty and we are alienated from God. We are under the wrath of God. We are separated from God. He is not our friend and we are his enemy because of our sin and because of our wickedness. We are under the wrath of God. That is why we need a Saviour. That is why we need the Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, to deliver us from our sins. He loved sinners like you and me. He died for sinners. He was crucified. He was nailed to a cross. He laid down his life. He gave himself for sinners. He was pure. He was holy. He was lovely. He was righteous. He was altogether without sin. And the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, laid down his life in the place of sinners. Do you know Jesus Christ? Because if you don't know him, you won't escape the fires of hell. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your sin remains upon you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are under the wrath of God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. After death comes judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die and then judgment. Not annihilation, not reincarnation, but judgment. Repent of your sins. Now I'm going to put a coat on because it's raining hard and I'm going to actually move to a different location. So, um, just running to get out of the uh, rain.